Hello out there. Uh, we are located in Copenhagen at the moment, at the KPC headquarters. We are the, the Co-77 transportation jury. Uh, my name is uh, Lars Larsen. I'm uh, founder of uh, co-founder of uh, Kibisi, uh, and I'm a jury captain of the Call 77 uh, uh, Transportation Jury. Uh, we are four members of the jury gathered here today. Uh, two could unfortunately not be here. Uh, Christian van Bengtsen, our spacecraft uh, uh, architect of the uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals, uh, he's out, out uh, launching his rocket. Uh, and Peter Ingvarsen, uh, founder of Noir, uh, couldn't be here either. But we are four members located here. And my name is Jens Barton Skifter. I'm also a co-founder of KBC. I'm the C in KBC and uh, the founder of uh, Biomega Bicycles and uh, Bike Geek. And uh, I'm uh, Frederick Andersen from uh, Solar Flight and I am uh, I'm a complete uh, electric transportation uh, geek and uh, I have a special passion for aviation and solar power. My name is Nelly Ulsansen, I'm an Associate Director at Arab in London and uh, I'm designing uh, railway stations all over the world, so I just love public transport. So we are gathered here today to announce the winners uh, of the student co category and the pro uh, category of entries for the Call 77 Transportation Awards. Uh, so we are proud to, uh, to introduce uh, or publish the, the, the notables and the winners of uh, first the student, uh, the student entries uh, and the first uh, notable uh, is uh, Track Rock. Uh, it is a, a, a built-driven uh, all-terrain uh, scooter uh, that uh, kind of emerges uh, typologies uh, from, uh, from from snow scooter and uh, and off-road vehicles uh, that runs not on snow. Uh, the student Track Rock project is by Alexei Mikhailov, uh, and the jury uh, says. Uh, regarding the project, that uh, the, the future will be fun too, and boys will be boys. Uh, the project is driven by green energy, and it allows uh, physical nature exploration. Uh, and third, it expands the category uh, within uh, transportation. I think it was very nice to see a project that was uh, different, very different. Um, because we always have to be very sustainable. In a way, this was a fun project. It was actually uh, taking you know, what you do today, but just doing it in a better way. Um, of course, there's problems that you have to drive around in uh, woods and mud and whatever, but um, it was a cool, fun project, well designed. Yeah, I don't think you'll see many of these in, in, in Copenhagen. No. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, the outskirts, so uh, Greenland, for instance, you, you might see some of them. Uh, yeah, it was kind of it had it had its own uh, visual uh, iconography, a uh, little bit uh, Star Trekky, uh, and um, yeah, for it, it's, it's just nice to see someone expanding that category uh, rather than staying within uh, what's expected and sustainable. Yeah, I I can only agree. I don't think we have too much to say about it uh, except that we found the project interesting and. Uh, being both politically very correct uh, from the electric in engine perspective and then perhaps not so politically correct driving around the woods in a big machine but we like it anyway <laughs> i think it's a great tool and a, and a great toy uh, i also think it's uh, well executed uh, and a lot of fun yeah. so we are the the pro category of entries in the transportation category uh, and the notable in this category is the, the skate cycle uh, by Elon Cartman uh, with credits to Antonio Mace, uh, Mason, uh, who was the cat illustrator on the project. Uh, the, you could say this is a, a project that uh, combines existing categories. You could say it takes the, the movement of the surfboard and the kind of uh, the smooth traveling and also from uh, from skateboards and uh, and the silence and uh, kind of mobility of uh, of the bicycle category uh, 
the jury states on regarding this project that it's uh, that it fuses uh, eclectic elements well, uh, as I said, uh, surf motion, collapsibility, and the silence from bikes. Uh, it still remains pretty cool, uh, fun, and unique, uh, and it makes uh, use of an innovative wheel uh, technology uh, that hasn't found other uh, credible applications. I think one of the cool things about this project is actually uh, the way that uh, Alan has showed his process. The process from you know, how he actually have uh, done it over and over again to refine it. I think that's a good thing that everybody can learn from. You know, it's, you don't get it first time. It's a, a lot of trials and a lot of testing, uh, which is cool. Yeah, I, I agree that it's a, it's a super good example yeah. on uh, that an idea is not enough. Like when you find it, you actually have to refine it, and like go over and over again, and do it like loads of testing to actually make a successful product out of it. Yeah, and I like the fact that it's not too geeky. A lot of these small gadgets, they uh, you know be become too uh, quirky, and uh, they find this little weird fad, and then they die. Um, so I, I think he steered well out of that, and I also like that he used these uh, hobbless wheels for something uh, useful. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I remember seeing them first time on a Franco Sparrow car <laughs> yeah. in, in Geneva many, yeah. Years, yeah. Many, many years ago. And finally, there's a way to put these into practice, so I like that part. And also the fact that he's operating with bigger wheels than you are on skateboard. Uh, seen from videos uh, makes you think that you can ride on almost all surfaces, where many other vehicles in, in that area would, you know, need concrete. Uh, I think that's really nice yeah. as well. Yeah. You also say, as you have talked about, there are a lot of attempts within this category to, to define uh, new stuff and a lot of them uh, tend to die out. But this is actually a good example and something that the jury uh, thinks will survive in the future. Yeah, and also here we've re rewarded uh, staying a little bit hedonistic and uh, playful. Yes, exactly. Um, the exact like part. Yeah. So have fun. <laughs> Uh, we are gathered here in uh, Copenhagen, uh, a big uh, bike city, uh, and it's and it's an honor to uh, to announce the winner of the student category, is which is the the project Aura. The project Aura is uh, a, a, an LED concept uh, implemented in uh, in the wheels of a bicycle, uh, and it's by Ethan Fryer and Jonathan Ota uh, from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Um, the jury states about this project that the future of bicycles uh, is bright uh, and it's good for planet Earth and uh, health. Uh, it's an easy concept to implement on all kinds of bikes and wheel assisted transportation. Uh, speed and color adjustment for safety is fresh and a meaningful innovation. Uh, the jury also states that there is a little about bike. Uh, and that a premise for success uh, is that the design will be re uh, well refined uh, and uh, finalized in a yeah, final design. I think it's a fantastic design because in this city with all the bikes we have here and uh, half of bikes don't have lights on them. So, uh, so this will actually not just show that you're on a bike but it will also show the speed you have so you can see whether you are increasing or decreasing your speed on the different color of the lights. I think that's a really cool thing. But of course, it needs to have a few iterations before it's, all, it's designed you know, to, to be able to fit all kind of wheels. Mm. Uh, yeah, as, uh, as, as we've talked about, we, uh, we are in a, in a bike city and obviously we're happy that, uh, that this is a bike project and I have a special bias towards uh, bicycles. Um, the, the, the interactive feature is a thing that we haven't really seen on, on, on bikes where you can kind of communicate uh, the speed you're, you're at and that obviously has uh, great benefits for, for security and it really stands out. Yeah, and it's not only uh, does it increase safety, it also looks cool. And I think it's important that when you introduce new technology to classic uh, vehicles like bicycles, they must be cool. Uh, I think it's Martin is a good example of that. Everything he does is cool. Exactly. So congratulations uh, with the winning project, Project Aura. So uh, now we are at the, the, the winner in the, the pro category. 
uh, and the winner is uh, the Mission R electric superbike. And as it says, it's an electric superbike. And it's by uh, Timothy uh, Prentice, along with uh, James Parker, who was hired to design the overall layout of the Mission R chassis. The jury states regarding this project that uh, the electric uh, motorcycle design is driven by performance sports. Uh, aspirational uh, sports can drive new uh, green business. Uh, the electric parts are visible and honest uh, and replaceable. Uh, it's a desirable uh, design built on classic ra racing motorcycle traditions, uh, yet forming a sustainable racing category with an excellent finish. There is also stated that an Arbata bike that this design needs its uh, its own uh, specific specificality uh, and to better adapt to the nature of a of a new technology. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, if I should say something to start off with, I, I really like the fact that uh, the electric engine was visible. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's one of, of um, the beautiful things of, of cl classic motorcycles is you can kind of see the mechanics of it. And uh, with a lot of these um, electric vehicles out there, um, the, the electric uh, engine uh, tends to be cladded away, uh, hidden away, you, you can't really see it in here, instead it, it's exposed and thereby kind of reinventing uh, or re re reinterpreting um, uh, an, an electrical design within a classic framework. Yeah, when, when we saw it the first time, uh, we looked at the motorcycle and everybody knows immediately what we're looking at, we're looking at a racing motorcycle and when you then just Within the next second, you look at it and see what's actually different in this motorcycle compared to any other motorcycle, uh, and all the electric parts uh, become evident. Uh, and I think that's uh, it's beautiful to to design something where you only change the necessities uh, rather than changing the complete uh, the complete body uh, of whatever you are designing. I also think sometimes you see these uh, electric motorbikes, they are overdone, they are over plastered into things they don't need. I think the cool thing about this one is you, you see it as a motorbike and then you think there's something wrong. And then that's when your eyes sort of get interested in what is uh, actually this. Because it has all the, you know, the, what I call sort of the desirable things from a racing bike, you know. So, so you really like to have it, but you can also see it's a little bit different. And that's what makes your eyes sort of uh, very interested in what is this object. Personally, I think I was also intrigued with the, with the quality uh, of the design work that we could see uh, from the material. It seemed very, very well done. Uh, not only the entry, uh, but the actual motorcycle and the internal parts that we could see, the, the motor, the battery, the, the control electronics, uh, all seemed to go hand in hand in a very, very professional manner. I think projects or entries uh, for Core 77 needs that level of professionalism to have a chance to win. So a very beautiful project yeah. uh, and very relevant project. Yeah. yeah, I also think we should add actually there was one thing you mentioned Frederick uh, that uh, um, you know the, the, the fact when you accelerate uh, on a motorcycle that you keep that torque yeah. throughout uh, the whole time you know yeah. that you don't have this loss of momentum and you don't need to get up into um, into into higher uh, into into different gears. Yeah. Yeah. When you're driving a motorcycle, I think that makes this specific project so relevant to everybody that's not used to electric vehicles. Is that you have here a vehicle where you can demonstrate very quickly, very clearly, the power of the electric motor. I think a regular combustion engine doesn't have. Uh, Talk before you have a certain amount of revolutions, uh, and here you have the talk right away. Uh, so you can really burn some rubber if that's what you want. <laughs> but I also think it's cool that, that you, instead of making a, a small moped, you know, you go for the big one. Uh, I mean, if we have to change the world into electrical mm -hmm. vehicles, you know, design something which is really desirable that everybody would like. And then you can, you know, uh, do the business plan to get it down to a mm -hmm. smaller moped or whatever it is. But this is the game changer, right? Okay. That was end. Exactly. Yeah. And what we have discussed is that it can be an icebreaker yeah. of, uh, of the future of electric uh, products in general, but within its own category, the yeah. superbike. Yeah. And, and, we, and we've seen so many times throughout history 
that new technology should be introduced from the top. Yeah, that's where new technology is introduced. Yeah. Any further comments? No. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> mission, well, mission motors, you've done well. Yeah. Good on you guys. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you here from Comac. Uh, thank you to Core 77. And thanks for all the fantastic entries. Uh, in general, the entries were very uh, bike centric, which I liked. And uh, uh, the other uh, part were, uh, were like very, very um, centered around uh, electric propulsion and that whole ecosystem. Uh, and that we were thrilled about too. Uh, we couldn't uh, give prizes to everyone, um, but I think we, we gave some really good prizes. Uh, and um, yeah, we hope to host uh, Core 77 prizes here in Copenhagen again. Thank you from here. And thank you for uh, letting uh, me be captain of the ship. It has been a pleasure to, uh, uh, to hosting, uh, hosting this jury session. Uh, and thank you everybody for contributing with uh, like good arguments and kind of uh, a good flow through the whole session. I think you have all been very good. Thank you very much. Yeah.